Charlie, the proudly self-labeled atheist homophobe, is back again, and this time under the YouTube username Atheist Homophobe. He seems to think he has a rock-solid new argument because he self-promoted his new video in the comment section of a video I made to him over a year ago. When that didn't work, he pee on me his new video directly instructing me to challenge it. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and presume that means he's looking to be corrected, and so I'll gladly challenge his video. It's linked below, entitled, Pro-Gay Atheists Are Stupid. From here on, I'll be speaking to Charlie directly. Let's address the title first, as it's also part of your thesis. When you use the term pro-gay, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm no more pro-gay than I am pro-hetero or pro-bi. That label suggests that I'm in favor of homosexuality over other sexual orientations. I'm indifferent to the sexual orientation of others, but I'm also pro-equality and full-heartedly support the rights of any homosexual or bisexual couples to marry and enjoy any other rights homosexual couples enjoy. So, if by pro-gay you mean in support of homosexual rights and liberties, I certainly fit that label. I'm going to work under the condition that that's what you mean, but you can let me know if I'm wrong. You claim that atheists who are what you call pro-gay are stupid because Atheists support evolution, and evolution favors reproduction. First of all, being an atheist only means a person doesn't believe in God or gods. It doesn't automatically mean that a person supports science or accepts evolution. The majority of atheists do support science and accept evolution, but there's no definitive link requiring all atheists to do so. You said atheists support evolution, but I'm not sure what you mean by that either. I certainly support it being taught in schools because there's overwhelming scientific evidence to validate it. However, the way your argument is using the term support evolution requires those who do so to be in favor of whatever evolution favors. I find that whether people accept evolution or not, very few people, atheists included, are in strict favor of supporting any preferences of evolution. Civil progress actually requires us to oppose the natural selection that drives evolution and directly impact the way it affects the progression and speciation of humanity. For example, most would agree that if a person receives a staph infection, that person should go to professionals who can treat and alleviate the potentially fatal infection. That person can then go on to reproduce other people susceptible to staph, whereas unchallenged natural selection would have killed that person and favored the reproduction of those less susceptible to staph. In short, just because a person acknowledges and realizes that evolution takes place in the natural world doesn't mean that they're in favor of it, let alone in support of letting it dictate the rules of our society. That's something much better left to the will of conscious beings capable of debate and delineation of their thoughts, not just some blind brute force of nature. Next, you argue that homosexuality is an evolutionary error, a malfunction. So what if it is? Someone born with one leg could be called an evolutionary malfunction if there's no perceived benefit to it. Does that mean we should deny such people equal rights in the hope that they disappear? And I hate to bring this up, Charlie, but straight people are the primary culprits for giving birth to homosexuals. Next, you argue that statistically homosexuals have a greater risk of STDs. Therefore, homosexuality is wrong. You've brought this up before. Statistically, sexually active people have an astronomically greater risk of contracting sexually transmitted infections than those who are celibate. Does that mean that those who are sexually active are wrong and deserve inferior rights to celibate people who have essentially no risk of contracting those infections? Next, you argue that it's wrong to be a lesbian because pregnancy reduces the risk of cancer. Now, I don't know if pregnancy does reduce the risk of cancer or not, and I'm honestly not curious enough to look it up, so I'll just grant you that it's true for the sake of argument. So what? Is your point that men should have fewer rights than women because they can't reduce their chance of, si of cancer via pregnancy? Is your point that women should be just as disgusted by men as you evidently are by lesbians? Does that mean that infertile or just non-pregnant women deserve fewer rights than fertile or pregnant ones, or that society should be disgusted by them for their apparently increased risk of cancer contraction? Let me know. Now, your grand conclusion is that homophobia exists as an evolutionary defense mechanism against STDs of homosexuals brought into the heterosexual community by bisexuals. 
So what's your end game, Charlie? Because being disgusted by homosexuals isn't going to stop bisexuals from having sex with both genders. Denying homosexuals the right to get married is only going to decrease the monogamy of their lifestyles and therefore increase the likelihood of them having short-term relationships with bisexuals who, by your logic, will then wickedly carry their potential sexually transmitted infections into the straight community. So what benefit does your disgust for them or denial of their rights offer? How do you suggest people treat homosexuals to solve this problem? Lastly, do you realize who has a much greater risk of infecting the heterosexuals than homosexuals who would have to do so through a third party do? Heterosexuals. For example, a woman who's unintelligent enough to have sex with you is probably foolish enough to have sex with just about anyone without getting tested or using protection. She is the one you need to be aware of. So by your logic, should we treat infected heterosexuals like second class citizens and deny them marriage rights too? Get back to me on that.